Hi, in this video we'll take a look at how Gauss's law can be used to find the electric field around a charged sphere. In this case the green ball is the charged sphere, it's got a positive charge, therefore the flux lines and the electric field is pointing radially outwards. It's important to note that it's a conducting material, it's like a metal ball, it's a pure conductor. So around this charged green sphere, we wrap a Gaussian surface. The Gaussian surface is also a ball, which you can see here in white color. It's only a surface, it doesn't have a thickness. Therefore, the flux lines are going through the Gaussian sphere. Then the Gaussian sphere is enclosing the charge. The charge is contained in that green sphere. With this, we'll now proceed to analyze further as to the electric field and the flux. In this schematic, we take the radius of the charged sphere, the green ball, as small r, the radius of the outer Gaussian surface as capital R, and therefore capital R is greater than small r in this particular schematic. Now there is an important difference between a conducting sphere and a sphere having uniform charge, and we must be very careful what we are dealing with. In this particular video, we are dealing with a conducting sphere, like a metal ball made of steel, aluminium, copper, etc. And the charge is distributed very evenly and it will all accumulate on the outer surface of that ball. There will not be any charge inside the ball, inside the conductor. Therefore, the charge density for such cases is charge per unit area of the sphere. On the other hand, if you have a problem of a uniformly charged sphere, then that means that the charges are uniformly distributed inside the sphere. In this case, it's not a conductor. It could be a ball of cotton wool, felt, or something like that. And here the charge density will be charge per unit volume of that sphere. This picture makes it very clear. On the left is a conducting sphere, and on the right is a uniformly charged sphere, where you can see all the positive marks inside that ball itself. Therefore, uh, we must be careful uh, to note what we are dealing with in a particular case. There are two cases of finding the electric field. One is to find it inside the sphere, and the other case is to find the electric field outside the sphere. Inside that green ball, because it's a conductor, there are no charges, so no flux, therefore the electric field is equal to zero. That's simple. So we have solved the case of the electric field inside the solid conducting sphere. We are now looking at finding the electric field outside the charged sphere. So we are back to the bigger Gaussian surface where capital R is greater than small r. And this picture reinforces what we are talking about now. We now apply Gauss's law. Our Gaussian surface, our sphere, has a surface area of 4 pi capital R whole squared. The capital R was selected by us, could be big or small. And phi, the electric flux, is equal to charge Q into 1 by epsilon 0, where the charge Q is the one given to the green ball, the one with the radius small r. And also, the flux is equal to electric field at any point into the surface area. So for our Gaussian surface, having surface area 4 pi capital R whole squared, the flux is equal to E for the Gaussian surface into 4 pi R squared. So if we equate flux and flux, we get E into 4 pi capital R whole squared is equal to Q into 1 pi epsilon 0. Therefore, we get the equation for E. The R squared is is in the denominator. So that means if we take a large Gaussian surface, the electric field there will be small, which sounds logical. So we can proceed to the next step. We now look at the equation for electric field in terms of charge density. Because we are dealing with a conducting sphere, as I said before, the charge density sigma is the charge per unit area, which is very important. Therefore, sigma into surface area A 
will give back the charge Q. Here, the surface area A is the area of the charged sphere, the green ball, not the surface area of the Gaussian surface. So we should be very careful to write Q is equal to sigma into 4 pi small r whole square. And by mistake, we should not write 4 pi capital R whole square. Putting that into the equation that we got for electric field, E will be equal to sigma A into 1 by epsilon 4 pi capital R whole square. 4 pi, 4 pi will cancel. And we will get the equation as shown there, sigma into small r whole square divided by epsilon 0 into capital R whole square. I hope you found this uh, video useful for you uh, and uh, do log in to my website if possible or download the app. Have a great day. Thanks and bye.